Okay, so here's part three of the little cactus pot video. In the first two, we did the drawing of it and we did all the patterns. And in this one, I'm going to paint it with my watercolors. And I've gone ahead and made some different colors. I'm gonna use blue for the background and then I wanted to make a bunch of different greens. So I have different greens for each cactus. So I'm gonna start with the background. And I want to do the background first so that it has a little chance to dry. So I'm just going to go into my blue. And anytime we're doing a large area like this, we want to start at one side and work our way over. So I'm just going to start by painting this side over here. And I'm just going to kind of let it soak into the paper. And I'll carefully go around all the pattern here and don't want to get on the flower or on my cactus so I'm gonna be careful to avoid those areas go around carefully and I'm using a flat brush so that I can do bigger areas pretty quickly here and you could use a round brush but I like this one since it has kind of more control for me. And I'm going to kind of go quickly because I don't want any of the edges to dry. We always want to keep our edge wet that we're working. So we're pushing the wet edge around, basically. Starting on one side, working all the way to the other side. And that's how we get it to dry pretty evenly. And don't worry if you get a little bit on there. We're going to let it dry before we go in and paint the the cactuses. Okay. And I'm just going to continue around and I want to try to remember what order I painted in so that where it's dry I can already go back in and paint next to it. Whenever we're watercoloring we want to make sure that we let it dry a little bit because if I come in here and paint this little leaf next to this big puddle of water all that green is going to wick into the sky and we don't want that on this one sometimes that's the effect that I'm looking for but for this I just want it to be a nice even blue and dry so I'm just going to spread out any puddles that I can see so look at your paper and if you're getting a lot of puddles one you're either using too much paint so maybe switch to a smaller paintbrush or you need to spread them around there's too much water so all right so I'm gonna let that dry and while that's drying I'm gonna go in and do my tablecloth and I think I'll do kind of a, a yellowy color which I haven't made up but that's okay I'm just gonna do a quick yellowy bottom here kind of keep with the southwest look so and you can do any color you want or you know even in whatever colors you end up having at home that might be what determines the colors that you use so now if you have one of those paint palettes that only have one or two greens you can always change your paints by mixing a little blue in mixing a little um, darker green in so or you can yellow it out make this kind of a color um, by putting some yellow in your green so in order to make different colors you need to mix up different greens otherwise it's going to be kind of one note all right so I'm going to switch to this brush and um, this is a long brush here, it has a nice round tip. So I can keep my hand out of the video. So I made this pink color and I thought maybe I'll make a kind of purple looking cactus. Because I remember uh, there is a cactus that is native to California that is a purple color. So I'm going to come in and just do a light purple on this guy. 
and that'll give me a little variety to all the greens that will be going on. So I'm going to paint him in quickly, and this side is already pretty much dried, so I don't have to worry about this purple getting into my sky. And while he's drying, I'm going to go back into my purple and get some more intense color. And then just put a little darker towards the edge here. And that's going to give it kind of a, a rounded and shadow look. So I do my wash, and then I go directly into my paint. And I'm going to give it a little dimension by giving it just a touch like that. So now if you feel like it might get too dark, but this one maybe I think is too dark. So I'm going to blot out on my paper towel and I'm just going to lift out some of that color with my brush. Do you see how the brush just pulls out some of the color? While it's still wet, you can play with it. Okay, so I like that. Uh, I think this one's going to be let's pick one of the kind of yellowy greens. So I'm going to skip that guy and let this edge dry. And I'm going to come over here and do my aloe vera. Now my aloe vera is a very dark green. So I'm going to go into this darker green that I've made and paint him a nice green wash. And again, I want a nice even color. So I'm just going to move the paint around here with my brush. And go over some of that blue that I got on there from the sky. And while that, we're going to let it soak in just for a second here. And I'm going to go back into my dark green, just like I did with the purple. And I'm going to come in and give it a little darker edge, just like that. So instead of going into the wash that I made, I went directly into my paint. So it's very saturated. Just picking up the tiniest touch, I mean barely touching. So I can get a little dimension in my watercolor. And I'm just gonna go in. You have to do this while it's still wet. If, if not, then you gotta change your color in your wash and do it that way. All right, so I made this one color here, and to me it looks like a saguaro green. So I'm going to try it out on my saguaro. It kind of has a little yellow in it. So you got to play around, and you should have a card of scrap where you can practice your paints. You know, you make up your washes first. Don't try and make them while you're painting. It makes it a little harder when things are drying and you're not getting it done fast. So make sure you make up your washes, test your colors, you know, be all ready to paint, and then you can paint. Otherwise, you kind of feel like you're rushing and things are drying and it's not working the way you want. So nice and light. And then I'm going to go directly into my color that I was using and just give him a little interest here. And I might even go into a different color just so he has a couple two-tone look here. A little dark green on one side and a little yellow on the other side. Just in the shadowy areas here. <clears throat> All right, while that's drying, I'm gonna come back and do this guy. <clears throat> and for this one, I made a nice yellowy green. We'll see how it looks here. And just fill him in. And I like it. So you want a variety of colors. go and I'm going to do the same thing I was doing where I go right into my paint get some real intense paint color here I'm going to put 
some neat watercolory effects here. So it has some interest. Okay, then I have one left. And for this one, kind of like the yellow green look. So I might just use this color and then mix a little bit of my dark blue in just to tone it down, just to see what that looks like. Kind of a really dark, dark green, like a forest green. So let's see what that looks like. Yeah, maybe I'll go a little darker on that one. I'm gonna pick up more paint, mix it into my wash here. There we go. And I just kind of did a lot of different colors on this one just to give them a little interest here. We want them to stand out from the other one. So I might go back and do my saguaro a little bit more of the yellow tone on one side here. Just make them a little darker. That's good. So you really want to see a difference between each of your cactus. And notice how I jumped around on the paper. And there's a reason for that. I want to make sure that my edges of where I'm painting next to are dry enough that it won't bleed. So I'm just going to go ahead and lift some of that darkness out of the middle. I feel like it's lost its pattern. So I'm going to pull some of that color out and just blot it off on my paper towel here and I think it'll look pretty neat when it dries sometimes when you have different colors mixing together they they get a really neat effect so I'm gonna just put a little yellowy green on the top of my saguaro here just to give it a little kind of sun look Try not to get anywhere near where I've just painted. And that looks good. All right, so while that's drying, I'm gonna work on the pot. And I'm gonna be very original and paint my dirt brown. I know, it's very exciting. I'm gonna do brown. But you can do purple gravel or orange gravel. You know, depends on what you like. And you see how there was this puddle of green here and it's wicked in. Typically, I wouldn't let that happen because I'd let it dry. But for today, we're just going to let that happen. And we'll see what it looks like. I can always lift some of it out. There we go. Okay, so I'm not going to paint the top because I want that brown to dry. So I'm going to work on the bottom here. And to keep with the southwest kind of idea, I'm going to paint this orange. And I find that this is kind of the fun part. You can come in and do some crazy colors. Now, if you wanted to do wet into wet, you could wet your paper first. But I'm just kind of working on the fly here. Clean out my brush. I'm going to just go into some of that darker orange. Just kind of do a nice dark orange edge here. So it has a little difference. And I might just pull up a few of these stripes. Wipe that off here. Okay, so now I'm going to let this edge dry. 
and I'm gonna work up here in the middle and I like this purple so I'm gonna go into my purple here and I'm gonna just add a, just a touch of different color into it so I can change it a little bit so it's not exactly the color of my cactus but still keeping with that kind of southwest look I'm just gonna paint this purple and I'm just so excited to see what you guys come up with I love all the twists you do on my projects I'll paint one thing and then I get 10 different versions of it but all uniquely yours and it's so exciting for me when I open my email and see all the pictures you've been sending me on how you did my my idea but your way and I just absolutely love that and that is what art is all about how to keep your ideas when you have something that someone's given you to work on so let me come in and I'm going to do some really pretty and bright flowers um, hopefully it's dry enough that I can show you I'm going to go directly into the paint so it'll really pop and I'll put some yellow and I could switch to a tiny brush but for this I won't <laughs> just gonna get some let's see maybe I'll do purple on this side over here to kind of balance I have red over here purpley red I'm gonna do some over here and if you have too much water on your paintbrush just dab it out that happens sometimes when we're watercoloring we want to do tiny little areas so I'm gonna just pull some of that liquid out by touching it on a paper towel and that's a nice little trick for you to learn like that and the little flowers are pretty cute and what color should I do that other flower? Hmm. If I was in class, I would ask you guys to tell me. You always have such great ideas. Let's see. What haven't I used yet? Maybe I'll do a nice red. Do a little red flower on this guy. There we go. Okay. So hopefully this is dry now. We'll see what happens. And I'm going to come in with that red that I used and just put in a really dark red line. You need a very steady hand like that. And I like that red, so I'm going to just do the lip of my pot this color. And if it feels like you're losing your patterns because your paint is too dark, remember you can just use a damp brush to pull out some of that color so you can see your pen design. And maybe I'll leave that stripe white but do my little boxes in a nice kind of bluey color. So let me try a blue out here. Now I really need a steady hand for this. That one's pretty dark, so I'm going to pull a little bit out of there. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. A little Southwest style art. And I really enjoyed all the Japanese koi fish you guys did. I can't even tell you. My heart is overflowing with excitement when I see them. So I can't wait to see how you guys do my little Southwest painting. And thank you for joining me.